it's JJ DiGeronimo, the president of Purposeful Women and Tech Savvy Women, and we are continuing our Women in STEM series. We are fortunate enough today to have Dr. Carol Inge. Hi, Dr. Carol. Hi, JJ. How are you? Thanks for having me. Oh, this is great. With so much, you've done so much in your STEM career. Could you summarize your STEM career for us? I started uh, back in Washington, D.C. in the early 90s and then moved on after my graduate degrees to the Virginia Department of Education. And then I founded an institute for teaching and technology at Longwood University and then was fortunate enough to have NASA come to me and want me to lead their distance learning program. And so I joined Virginia Tech in that mission and created a modeling and simulation center around energy and the environment in South Boston, Virginia, and was fortunate enough to be able to put some amazing technology in place and really touch the lives of, in particular, rural people, um, kind of in the early days when the internet got started. This is incredible, incredible. And, you know, how did you manifest all these opportunities for yourself? Well, I think staying connected and trying to be connected is is very important. One of the things I did early on was I volunteered at the U.S. Department of Education in Washington. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think volunteerism and and being willing to say, okay, I I need some experience here. And and so I did a lot of volunteer work and and took a lot of positions in the early days that uh, I didn't get paid very well for. But I used those connections to navigate to where I am today. That is great advice. And I think, you know, sometimes women are doing the same job all the time. And I always suggest get out of your comfort zone, do something new to advance your network. And that network, you know, has really seems like it has really benefited your career journey. And how are you leveraging that network today? Well, first of all, I I really do use social media and in particular LinkedIn. I have a lot of user groups on LinkedIn. Um, I've got a modeling and simulation user group. I've got a a women in energy user group that is over 300 women in that particular group. Um, So I'm leveraging that network, um, but more recently I founded the International Association for STEM Leaders, and so that's been my my latest uh, project. So can you tell us a little bit about that project? Sure. Uh, What I realized um, when I started, when I went away from Virginia Tech and started to do some more entrepreneurial things, I realized that there was nobody focusing on the leaders, the people every day who were making a difference in the lives of kids with STEM. And I thought it was very important to, instead of talking about the problem, we all know the problem, but we really need to get to the people who every single day impact students Mm -hmm. and are putting these projects in place and managing the money and hiring the teachers and empowering those teachers. You know, there's a concept called teacher as leader. And real school leaders empower their teachers to be leaders instead of saying, this is what you should teach and how to teach it. They're saying, take a risk. If you want to build a garden out back, if you want to have do some environmental work on the local pond, those are the kinds of risks that, that those uh, teachers are taking, and it's those leaders that are empowering those people. Oh, Dr. Carroll, I think this is phenomenal, and I'm sure so many of the STEM leaders can really benefit from the uh, the programs initiatives you're putting together. How do people learn more about this? We have a website. It's www.stem-leaders.com, and we are hosting an inaugural event where we're bringing together upwards of a hundred STEM leaders from around the world to come together for two purposes. The first purpose is to get to know one another because they don't really have a peer group, and this is going to be their peer group. Uh, These are very seasoned professional leaders that are coming together in Washington on the 24th and 25th at the D.C. Convention Center. Um, But also, we are trying to develop a framework for STEM certification. So on our website, there's information about that. And and in the coming months, we'll be releasing um, what does it look like. And and really, we're focusing on the classroom and the school. What does it look like when a student is totally engaged in STEM? And that's what the workforce is really looking for, those people that are ready to be uh, a STEM person, a a worker, and a STEM leader in their organization. Oh, Dr. Carroll, I really think this is a phenomenal initiative. I know so many people are really going to benefit at so many levels. So in closing, I would love to know if you have any advice, words of wisdom, or anything you would like to share with people watching the video today that are either thinking about a career in STEM or already are in a career in STEM. Well, I think the biggest 
advice I give anybody right now is go start a business. Go to your state corporation commission, pay a hundred or two hundred dollars, become the CEO of your own company tomorrow. Define what you want to do in your own career or for the rest of your career, depending on where you are or the start of your career, and just go out there and do that and take a risk. Be willing to volunteer, be willing to network, be willing to take a position for not a lot of money, particularly in this economy, but you know, at a minimum, be your own boss. Go, go get that, uh, what you need, the credentials to be the CEO of your own company and to follow that vision and, and network with people that have done it as well. I love it. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.